Hello and welcome to Union Solidarity International. I'm with Andrew Brady today and we are going to give an overview of what we think are some of the most important stories from the past week. Um, but firstly, USI is just a, a month old now. We launched on the 1st of May. Andrew, how do you think it's going so far? I think the initiative is going very well. I think it's going better than we expected. Uh, we're an organisation that is specifically designed to connect trade unions and trade union members across the world and what's been very clear so far is the appetite of trade unionists, social movements and progressives to work in a closer alliance with each other and over the last month we've had thousands of hits on the website, we've gained hundreds of followers on our social media streams on Twitter at USI Live and also on Facebook and I think what's important is that when we go forward uh, and we continue to build these alliances is that what do we do together to actually develop campaigns that which make a genuine material difference on the ground uh, particularly in Greece but also on the issues du jour as is what is quite, quite clear is the the austerity agenda that's been rolled out not just across Europe but in the world. So we're connecting trade unionists and their allies across the world and uh, not just for the sake of it but because we want to drive campaigns and uh, we've got three main campaigns at the moment. We've got one to uh, support domestic workers and particularly ILO Convention 189 on the rights of domestic workers. We've got one to support brick kiln workers in India and uh, our flagship campaign at the moment is a uh, solidarity with Greece. Um, how's that one going? Well, I, I mean, the campaign with respect to Greece has gone fantastically well in the sense of the, the appetite and the desire for trade unionists in Greece to link up with trade unions in Britain and in Ireland. I visited Greece recently and a series of articles of course are on our website usilive.org where I've sought to give a, a perspective not only in the economics and the political dynamics but the, the conditions on the ground because I think people should be under no illusions about the social crisis that is going on and unfolding in Greece at the moment and we have had the support of a number of primary unions in Greece and also confederations uh, in, in the acting industry. Mm -hmm. Today we've just had confirmation that POTHA, the, the Greek Entertainment Confederation, wish to formally endorse USI okay. and encourage their members to be come invo become involved and participate within our within our forum and of course ALMA, the public sector secondary school teachers have endorsed us and the initiative I, I believe is going from strength to strength. Interestingly the city with the city whereby people who have looked at our website the most popular destination is in Athens so mm -hmm. it shows the website is reaching beyond the borders of the UK and Ireland and I'm I'm particularly pleased with how that how that campaign's gone because our brothers and sisters in Greece need our solidarity mm -hmm. more than ever, and uh, I really believe that USI can bring a unique perspective to the the trade union movement and what is going on there, and giving voice mm -hmm. to the conditions that workers are experiencing. So really delighted with the way the campaign has went, and. I can only see it going from strength to strength. That's fantastic. Thanks for that update. Um, I thought what we'd do is a bit of a, a roundup of some of the important stories that have been making the news over the past week. Um, what I think is important, um, the ITUC released today their annual survey of violation of trade union rights. And uh, it's no surprise that these are ongoing and actually worse than usual, probably because as uh, governments around the world are implementing austerity measures to make working people pay for the financial crisis, unions are resisting them and uh, that's that's causing violations of trade union rights. Um, there has been a lot of activity in the Middle East obviously around the Arab Spring, a lot of unions have been participating in the uprisings in North Africa and the Middle East and they've, they've paid a heavy price for that. However, I think that we're seeing the birth of a new trade unionism in many of those countries often for the first time. So that is promising. Um, 
However, Colombia remains the most dangerous country to be a trade unionist. Uh, 29 trade union activists were murdered in Colombia last year. Guatemala, not much better, uh, 10 murdered there. Um, and the ITUC report also highlights a, a number of other issues, including the fact that there are growing instances around the world of governments ignoring their own labor legislation. Um, and um, other common problems were abuse of migrant workers and exploitation, particularly of women workers in export processing zones. So a lot of work to be done. Trade unionists are under a lot of pressure around the world and we need to stand together and support each other collectively. Um, going on to some of the country specific stuff, maybe one of the biggest stories that's happened this, this past week is uh, the recall election in the state of Wisconsin in the, in the US uh, where Governor Scott Walker faced an important election and the unions were heavily involved in that. Andrew, I know you've been following this. Do you want to tell us something about that story? Well, I, th I think like the situation in Greece, this has been one of the most important issues facing our global labour movement. We have seen a concerted attack on the rights of working people to collectively organise and with the governor of course Scott Walker in that state pledging an all out assault mm -hmm. on labour unions and of course the, the result in Wisconsin was deeply disappointing but the campaign and the ground organisation that was conducted by labour unions is a, has been a real inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, the ability to mobilise hundreds and hundreds of thousands of working people and their families to get to the situation where around a million people signed a petition to recall Scott Walker, the only the third governor in American history to have faced that situation. And some of the preliminary results that have uh, came out thus far in terms of turnout by union families mm -hmm. to come out and vote has been really spectacular. and. You know, we have got a lot to learn from our uh, American brothers and sisters about how they actually conduct a campaign online via social media and how that transfers onto the ground organisation. Of course, we should say that Scott Walker and the Republicans outspent the Democrats and Labour unions by eight to one and most of that money coming out with the state of Wisconsin. Yeah. So I think that tells you all you need to know about uh, the, the special interests mm -hmm. and the desire to break. And a, a nationwide unions. assault on collective bargaining, essentially. Abs absolutely. And, you know, what's going on in Wisconsin, as I re referred to earlier, is the same as what's going on in Greece, mm -hmm. the same as what's going on in the UK. It is the same agenda being played out, albeit at different levels mm -hmm. of extremity. But it's the same issues, it's mm -hmm. the same game plan that's been rolled out by vested interest to try and dismantle organised labour which is the last bastion of uh, trying to attain collective rights for working people. We shouldn't take heart in any glorious defeats here, mm. you know, we need to redouble our efforts. Yeah, we need to win, don't we? We need to win and we have elections of course coming up in America later on this year but also across Europe mm -hmm. in the next couple of years and we really need to redouble our efforts, but I've got a lot to learn mm. from the campaign in Wisconsin. Yeah. I've actually been following American labour news um, over the past couple of weeks and there's interesting things bubbling below the surface which don't often make it into the mainstream media. There's a, uh, unions winning contracts in a number of places that haven't before and one story which caught my eye just because it was different was the um, mixed martial arts fighters are mm. attempting to unionize and they've uh, they formed a fighters association um, and they're trying to take on essentially the, the mafia who run the big fight venues and mm. they've been supporting by culinary workers local 226 so I thought that was a, just an interesting story and um, just shows that um, you know the, people working across all sorts of different sectors are getting involved in, in, in uh, unionizing. Um, just to bring things back to the UK, um, I think I'll run through some of the things which have happened in, in this country because there's a number of uh, interesting stories. Um, the first is the past week we had the Queen's Diamond Jubilee and um, 
I think a lot of people were shocked to learn that a company providing security for the Jubilee used unemployed, unemployed people as free labor, threatening them with the loss of benefits if they didn't take the job. Uh, and they were, these people were forced to sleep under London Bridge, so they weren't even provided with, with accommodation. And uh, it just raises the specter of the Victorian workhouse values that the, the coalition government would, would like to take us back to, and, and just shows that um, any remnants of the welfare states and social democracy are seriously a threat, um, even in the, the more established and wealthier countries in, in Europe. Um, Good news, however, is that um, Unite won a recognition campaign in GE Caledonian in Ayrshire after a long and hard fight. Very, very important because um, GE, big multinational company, not always sympathetic to trade unions and uh, so a very, very successful campaign there. Um, doctors have voted to take industrial action for the first time in 40 years, big story. Um, the PCS tax office workers have voted to take strike action against job cuts and privatization. and. Uh, a PCS branch also has expressed their support for the Occupy movement, which uh, uh, an interesting link being made there. Um, and then also the RMT union has won an agreement with London Underground over service during the Olympic period um, because of the additional passenger journeys that will be made on the Underground. Uh, they have agreed in, in, um, a bonus payment, so well done to the RMT for that. Um, also couple of things which I find quite heartening is that even though we're living through austerity, there are some unions that are, are managing to get decent pay rises for, for their members. Um, one of the most significant is the big German metal workers union, union IG Metall, uh, who managed to get a above inflation pay rise for engineers and metal workers, I think a 4.3% pay rise. Yeah. So uh, it just shows that solid bargaining can still win. And uh, on, on a similar subject, in South Africa, the media workers... Union um, in their state-owned South African Broadcasting Corporation secured a 9.5% pay increase after a two-week negotiation. Um, and that is impressive, and it's part of a bigger story, which is that uh, COSATU in particular, the South African labor mo movement, has significantly raised living standards in, in South Africa since it was formed in 1985. And it's because of those kinds of hard negotiations which have consistently driven up um, Wages. Um, also worth mentioning in the southern Afri African country of Swaziland, um, it's a, an absolute monarchy. The monarch of Swaziland essentially takes much of the state resources and uses it for himself. Um, there is severe political repression, and uh, currently transport workers are on an 11 day strike. Uh, it's been declared illegal by the Department of Labor and uh, a number of leaders of the transport union have been arrested. So important to express solidarity for unions in Swaziland and to also help get the message out uh, what, what's happening in Swaziland. Um, and a, a final story, just a reminder that if any of you are using smartphones or iPads or any kind of tablet, it was probably made in a factory in China or India uh, owned by a company called Foxconn. Mm. Um, and uh, Foxconn have been notorious for the conditions that people work under in those factories. And uh, the campaign is ongoing. A recent report has shown that conditions haven't actually improved very much. Um, there have been suicides and all sorts of problems there. So um, I think unions need to continue to put pressure on companies like Apple that use uh, Foxconn products and to, to pressurize them to uh, put pressure on, the, on their supply chains to... Um, make the production a lot more ethical. Um, Andrew, I think that's uh, all I have for Labour News. Is there anything you'd like to add to this week's update? Other than, I think, a common thread in some of the stories that you identified is that one of the key elements to get us out of the economic conditions that we're in in terms of challenging and addressing austerity is wage rises. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There is a direct correlation between workers and families having higher incomes in their households and economic growth. The way to growth is by investing in growth mm -hmm. and that is by principally through wage rises. In relation to Germany and a, a fantastic article by Heiner Flasbeck mm -hmm. which is on our website of course in relation to Germany is that the principal reason for a lot of the Eurozone's problems is the depreciated level of wages within mm -hmm. Germany mm -hmm. and you know 
workers in Germany securing wage rises, as you just referred to, i.g. Metal, is very important uh, for the health of the European economy mm -hmm. in general. And I think organising and campaigning round wages is absolutely central to the challenging austerity and getting this, getting the UK and other European mm -hmm. world economies back on track. It is the, the most simplest and the easiest thing that mm -hmm. can be done and there is no reason why businesses can't do it because as we know businesses in the UK are sitting on around £62 mm -hmm. billion pounds mm -hmm. and if we are going to get out of the economic mess that we're in, austerity has to end of course and the principal way of doing that is by putting wages in people's pockets. Mm -hmm. Give them money to spend and let's grow out of the Absolutely. recession. Absolutely, and mm -hmm. grow our way out of the recession. As, as Paul Krugman has been obviously in the UK uh, arguing at length is that one of the most critical ways that we can help grow our economy is by investing in people mm -hmm. uh, and investing in, in wages not returning to some Dickensian model of economy and thinking that we're going to mm -hmm. grow our way out of the mess that we're in. Mm -hmm. You know, is this isn't a this isn't a question of economics. This is a question of ideology. Absolutely. And you know, we just need to, through USI Live and of course with other unions in Britain and Ireland across Europe, keep on arguing and campaigning together in order to ensure that our voices are heard and not drowned out by the, the media corporations who want to spin a line and support society. Thank you for that, Andrew, and thank you for listening to this Union Solidarity International podcast. We'll have more for you in weeks to come.